Wait, wait, wait. Huh? Ah! Hello, my dear friends. Another day, another suggested video is made. Today, you will learn how to handle the money services in CS2. You can read all of the entities, economy, how much money they have, how much they have spent, and more. You can watch more C Sharp content on the channel or from this playlist. Subscribe, like, or write a comment. I would love to hear the next feature you want me to cover. You can also find the Discord server in the description. But remember, comply with the terms of service for the game you're coding hacks on. Many games permit it and it's essential to respect their guidelines. All Sweat C Sharp tutorials are designed with multiplayer disabled and this tutorial will precisely demonstrate how to achieve that. Now enjoy this tutorial. Alright, so welcome to today's showcase. Let's take a look at what you will have at the end of this video. So here is the code. It's not a lot. It's a little bit of code. Here is the imgui part. It's our money manager, but let's take a look at it in game instead. So before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam under the game Counter Strike 2. We will right click on the properties. We will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, you can get banned otherwise. Inside the main menu, you can check that this is enabled by going into matchmaking, checking a map, and this window will come up saying that you have launched the game in Dash Insecure. Otherwise, do not run any applications that could get you banned. Here you can now instead go into practice and play with bots like this. So now, in our practice game on the map Nuke, let's try our money services hack. So, if we open our program and run it on the green button, we should have a little window. If we make it larger, we can see that it says money manager, then all of the entity's name so sweatbot that's me if we take a look at my information we can see that account a thousand that's my money cash spent this round self-explanatory but if we buy a digo we can see that the information changed you can see that gray mouth he is here he still has a thousand bucks and uh, can inspect this guy so Bot Dios. Let's take a look at him. He has $3,700, so he has some more cash than me. Let's kill these people. We can see that I have now $450, $600, 3450 So it, it follows the current economics of the players. So like we always do, we will create a new C Sharp console project with the .NET version 8. And since CS2 is 64 bits, we will change the build architecture to x64. And this will make us ready to install some NuGet packages. So we will head into the NuGet package manager 
and install the SWED64 memory library, then the clickable overlay or transparent overlay. It will be the version 9.1. I have not tested the newer versions, but I know we had some issues before, so just make sure everything is okay by using the version 9.1. Then we can start creating some classes. So the first one will be the renderer class. Then we will create the second class, which will be the entity class. This entity will have a name, then some economic attributes. So the account, the cash spent, then cash spent total. Then once we have the entity class, we can continue in our main code. So we will be using Swed64. Then to initialize Swed64, we will create a new instance of the Swed class with CS2 as the process then get the client with the get module base, then client.dll. Then we make a pit stop to create our imgui renderer of all of this. So we'll go into the renderer class, then add using clickable transparent overlay, then imgui net. After that, we will change our class variables to a list of entities. This will be a copy of our entities on the main code and then we will inherit the overlay class on our renderer for that we will need to implement the render function so a protected override of the void of the render then create a new window of our imgui menu and call it money manager after that we will have a try catch statement because this has a tendency to throw some errors. And in this try catch statement, we will take a copy of the entities by using the to list function. Then proceed to loop through the entities in this copy. Then when we have the current entity in this loop, we will create a new tree node with the entity name, then set the first element to a text that's colored with a vector 4. We will need to be using system.numerics. A vector 4 with the color green. Then have the account value from our entity.account. Then we will create two more texts. One for the cash spent for this round. And then one for the cash spent in total of the game. These will be the color red instead and some different text. Now, when we're done with the imgui part, we will go back to our main code and continue. Here, we will create a new renderer instance, then start it. Then we will have our list of entities, which we get from the main code. Then we need some offsets. So we will go into the A2X dumper, CS2, credit goes to him for this beautiful dumper for updated offsets. And we will go into the generated folder and the offsets.cs. Here we will find the entity list. Then we're done with the offsets.cs for now. We will go into the client.dll.cs and get the P in game money services, then the I account, then the I total cash spent and the i cash spent this round i forgot one offset but let's continue we will create a while true loop so it always runs and we will clear the entities at first then get the entity list address by using the sweat.read pointer with the client and the dv entity list then we will continue to make a list entry with the sweat.read pointer using the entity list and 0x10 or 16 in decimal. Then, once we have the list entry, we will proceed to loop through some controllers. So, we will check that our list entry is not set to 0. Then, we will get the current controller by using sweat.read pointer with the list entry, then the i or the current loop times 0x78.
Now the money services will be a pointer, so we will have to use the sweat.read pointer with the current controller and then the in-game money services offset. Now that we have our money services, we can create a new entity and fill it with our wanted attributes. So the first attribute will be the name, which is a string, and we will read it from the current controller. I had forgotten to add the offset, this player name, so we will do that really quickly. Then we will continue and set the account variable to sweat.readint with the money services there, then the i account. Cash spent will be sweat.readint again, the money services, then the cash spent offset. At last, we have the total spent cash, which would be, you guessed it, money services, then the total cash spent. Then we add it to the entities list and make a copy to the renderer.entities. We sleep for a second and that's it. You can add more variables if you want to, but let's try it out. So before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam under the game Counter-Strike 2. We will right click on the properties. We will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash Insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important can get banned otherwise. All right, so in our practice game on the ancient map, let's try our results. So if we press the play button, you can see that our little window pops up. I think it's smaller in the beginning, but if you make it a bit larger, we can see that it is all the entities' names. Here are the teammates. You can see our cache. $300. If we spend something like a nade, we can see that it goes down to zero and we spent $1,000. So that is it for this tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next one.